from that ninja, this isn't a story. The only reason Sapp is bringing it up because he's trying to get in the good graces of white America. What? Why him talking negatively about Miles Garrett would get him back in the quote-unquote good graces of white America? Why does white America feel like that he's not in their good graces? Come on, Ninja, that doesn't make any sense. From Thorny Switch, say with Big L, you like my Abby? Okay, thanks. From Thorny Switch, an effing mess, Bama. Any GM with an ounce of common sense would look at the UNC-UGA game and say no thanks to taking Mitch Trubisky in the first round. We're going to talk about Mitch Trubisky here in a second. We're going to get into... uh, we're going to get into uh, the top five quarterbacks uh, coming out this Thursday night. You pretty much know who my list is, but some of the other guys after like two, um, you know, I'll just give you my thoughts on those guys. We've been doing this for the last week or so, uh, talking about the different position players, prospects coming out in the draft this Thursday night. From Fel Pay, paleontologist, then you better strap on that helmet and go hit somebody. Yeah, and that's the sentiment. And whether it's wrong or right, and I think we've talked about this before, but whether it's wrong or right, like you kind of get the feeling in watching NFL uh, games your entire life and watching the draft and especially me having a little inside with my brother going through the process. Like uh, I remember when Ryan came out, and you're listening to the Doug Stewart Show, they always give these pros and cons, okay? They always give these pros and cons on the player. Whether there's not a, you know, a bad thing that you can say about the guy on or off the field, they just automatically give something, you know, to the con side. And the thing that they said about my brother, I'll never forget it. Mel Kuyper was that Ryan Stewart is a strong-willed player. And he also said in the con, you probably can look this up, that he has the possibility to become a locker room lawyer. Now, you might be saying, what's a locker room lawyer? The locker room lawyer is just that. He's a lawyer in the locker room, always talking about their rights and always making a fuss and raising sand as opposed to just going out there and playing. He, he's causing civil unrest in the locker room, you know, you know, banning against the coaches or whatever. Now, that actually was my brother to a T. <laughs> That actually was my brother to a T. And you know him. You know his personality. You know, he'll straight go ham and debate and scream and argue with anybody in the world. Oh, my gosh. We was arguing with this ninja all weekend long, man. He's just, you know, he's just he's just an arguer. And y'all remember the two large stews. A lot of times I just let him scream and, you know, I just be quiet because it was useless. So, yes, that assessment of him was very accurate. But he didn't have to say it. So bottom line, guys with, you know, a life, to put it, I guess, in as as simple terms as I can, guys that have a personality, guys that have a life, guys that don't feel football is the end-all, be-all, you know, they're great players, but they also consider other things in life. It seems like NFL people don't like that. Like, they want you to be – engrossed, like all in about football. And I guess from their side of things, that's what you want optimally. But yeah, yeah, um, yeah. For these two guys to come out talking about Booger McFarlane and Warren Sapp to say this, you know, like why would they have anything personal against Miles Garrett? That doesn't make any sense. That doesn't make any sense. The whole thing Ninja said about, you know, they're trying to get in the graces. What? Why? 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 Why Why? Why is Miles Garrett in the bad graces of white folk, as Ninja put it? It doesn't make sense at all. These guys watched tape on him, and they gave their opinion. I'm sure they've watched tape on many other players in the past. Maybe you haven't heard about them because maybe they didn't go number one, and they've probably given critical opinions. And maybe they've talked about plenty of players that have come out in the draft years in the past and they've given glowing opinions about. There's nothing personal against Miles Garrett. I don't believe there's anything personal against Miles Garrett. 
Miles Garrett production, based on the numbers that I read to you earlier, they aren't that that that, that great. They just aren't. Yeah, where where it was, you know, a can't miss, and you got to take this guy. Eh, some red flags kind of popping up right now. Mm, we'll see. From um, let's see, from the people's champ, the NFL wants you to put them as the number one priority in your life over your family and even yourself. Right. Right. They they want you, and and once again, I'm making that statement, and I think a lot of people agree with me on that, but really, can you blame NFL scouts, NFL organizations for not wanting a guy that's committed 150% to being the best football player that they can? Yeah. 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 From Mr. Harper, the NFL wants the Kobe Bryants of the world. Kobe Bryant as in they want you to obsess over your crap. Exactly. That's a great analogy. That's a great analogy. Kobe Bryant, legendary for caring about nothing except for basketball. Nothing. And that's what they want. That's a perfect example. And Mr. Harper, uh, Mr. Harper Sports Talk was sold back on SME uh, very soon here. And it's a very good point. That's the exact example that you want to give. You, you, you're talking about Kobe Bryant work ethic. This work ethic term is what they always throw around for guys that just are gym rats, guys that stay in the, in the film room and guys that at every chance are working on their game. And, uh, you know, when you have interests outside of your perspective sport, um, it's kind of a red flag. From Mo Confederate Day Cheeks, I agree, Ninja Sap, trying to get back in Mr. Charlie's good graces. Uh, I don't even know what that means, once again. From Ralph Scott T-Dub, I hope it works so Cleveland can destroy Mitch's career instead of Garrett or D. Watson. Uh, from T-Doug, Doug, then why aren't they saying – Shit about Mr. Trubisky. Because they don't play quarterback. <laughs> they don't play quarterback. You know, the, 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 the information is coming by former defensive linemen. Okay, they can, they can attest to, they can comment uh, more so about a defensive lineman than a quarterback. I don't know. From the people's champ, that's a terrible way to live your life, especially when the NFL is going to take years off your life anyway. That's true. From Big Apple Bastard, War Moon said he wouldn't take Trubisky number one. Nobody invited him on their show. Uh, From That Ninja, once again, Doug, what in the hell are you talking about? Uh, What in the hell are you talking about? (laughs) Hey, listen, don't shoot the messenger. Uh, for all you conspiracy ninjas that listen to this show, don't shoot the messenger. This is a story that we're talking about a couple of days of an advance, in advance of the NFL draft. We're talking about two prominent, one Hall of Famer, defensive linemen that are in the media game. Okay? That's it. They're commenting about the number one supposed draft in this year's NFL draft. The number one player who actually happens to be a defensive lineman. What don't you understand? From that ninja once again, Doug, since you're pretending like you were born yesterday, white people don't generally like good black players. (laughs) What? What the fuck are you talking about? Over the last 40 years, the number one player drafted has probably been 75% black. What are you talking about? Uh, Oh, boy. And I mean, it's sad because Ninja did a great job for me Thursday and has a great show, The Underground Railroad Show. But sometimes... (laughs) sometimes sometimes ninja is conspiracy ninja there's no conspiracy here man it is what it is these cats are giving you comments about a guy that they don't see have a motor 
okay? He just so happens to be black. I don't think that they're saying, oh, they're going to stick it to the black defensive lineman. It just so happens that I happen to be a black defensive lineman. You're right. So I'm going to stick it to Miles Garrett. Miles Garrett owe me money. Miles Garrett took my girlfriend. Please stop, man. You take it a little bit too far. From Barbershop Sports Talk Podcast, if Sean isn't picked in the top two, I'm going ham. Um, from Sin, there's a lot of confusion going on in here. From Clay, I ain't passing Davis. Mo Cheeks is today's national treason day. You mean national treason day? I didn't read that in my days, uh, my annual days for the day. Well, did I even talk about today's national days? I didn't even get to the – we'll pull that up for you. And when we come back from the break, we'll get into that on the Doug Stewart Show. Yeah. Hey, listen, man. I just talk about sports. I talk about the prominent stories in sports. Okay. Draft is Thursday night. So we're going to have more draft talk over the next couple of days. Concerning the draft, it's a pretty interesting story. I don't know how big the story is. It's a pretty interesting story. That two former defensive linemen feel like Miles Garrett has the possibility of being a bust based on what they've seen on tape. Don't shoot the messenger, man. You might be a Miles Garrett fan. Miles Garrett might be your second, third cousin on your mama's side. But don't shoot the messenger. We'll be back in three minutes. Quarterback talk. NFL draft. Don't go away. See? 